Hey guys, this is Tiffany from Southern Gals Designs. This is my very first YouTube tutorial, so I'm glad you joined me and I hope you take something away from this. So what we're going to be making today is going to be um, a mail art envelope, okay? This is a vintage mail art envelope. That vintage grunge is kind of the theme that I was going for. Um, at YPP, your paper pantry, we are given challenges each month. I'm new to the group, and so this month um, it was to create a mail art envelope that is vintage grunge. So this is kind of what I came up with. Um, I had a few questions about it, and so I wanted to walk you through the tutorial of kind of how this came about. So if you would, follow me on over here to the table, and we'll get started. What we'll do is we'll first start out with um, a envelope that is a five by seven envelope. Um, this envelope is just a plain everyday envelope that you can get. Um, you could create your own envelope if you wanted to, but I just used some that I had in my stash that I picked up at the thrift store. So um, use whatever you have. Um, the other thing, what we're going to do is we're going to start off by doing a collage. Okay, and so I and thrifty. Very thrifty. I like to keep um, things and reuse them. So here in my shoe box um, that I have, I have gotten several different um, scrap pieces of paper that um, I have picked up along the way from different projects. One of the things that I found recently was um, a thrift it's kind of a thrift store junk place um, close to our home that I have found some really cool stuff. Um, I found some really vintage um, recipe books here. I've got some old patterns. We'll be using those today. Um, here's another little cookbook that I've gotten that had some really cool fonts. Also had some uh, handwritten uh, recipes in there. So this is going to make some really great collage pieces. Maps. Um, they had some really nice background that's going to create a lot of texture for us today. So I don't know if you've ever done collage before, but the way I do it, and that's what I'm going to show you today, is just a few ideas of how I create it, is I'm using the um, Xyron glue stick. You can use any permanent adhesive glue stick that's out there. Um, I don't, I'm not really satisfied with this one. I will um, try to. Oh, sorry. Um, I'll I'll probably try a different kind. Um, I've seen a few videos of some different kinds of. Uh, so this is the glue stick that I'll be using today. You can use anything that you would like that you have on hand. Um, it really doesn't matter because we're going to be putting some collage decoupage um, glue on top of it anyway. So one of the things that I like to do is um, I like to mix text. Um, with different uh, colorful images. It can be anything really. Um, I have quite a collection of um, napkins so I'll be using those today. I personally do not um, cut many of my collage elements. I just tear them but that's totally up to you. I've got some scrap uh, mail envelopes come from uh, probably bills in the mailbox but um, we'll be using those. I've got a few different kinds of napkins that we'll be using. And I'm just going to show you. I'm probably going to, oops, I'm probably going to speed this up for you guys. Um, but I want to show you just a few of the steps that um, I do when I create my collage. So, um, really, I like to collage because it is very effortless. There is no particular thing that I have to do. Nothing that I really have to uh, work hard to concentrate on. And that's how I tend to like to do my pieces. Um, I tend to do very small. I, I assume that's small. Um, I don't do large, large pieces and I kind of overlay them. So just put a little bit of the glue stick on the back. Again, I'm really not paying very much attention to uh, exactly how much glue, but we do want it to stick to the envelope. Um, and I overlay them just a little bit. And what that's going to do is in the end, when we have this all collaged up, it's going to create some really interesting textures. And what we're going to do is it's not necessary to uh, 
really worry about what graphics we're putting on there and so forth. Now for these napkins, because they're really thin, um, sometimes I will have some scissors that will help me out. And if I can find some, I'll just cut up a few strips. Um, and if you've ever worked with decorative napkins before, you will know that uh, it has three layers. Most of them have three layers. Um, that you peel apart to be able to put them on to your work surface. So it's kind of tedious to be able to go in there and pull them apart. But if you have a little bit of fingernail, you can see there's one layer, two layers. That leaves you a very thin layer of paper, of napkin here. So, and I actually found these guys um, on clearance at Tuesday morning. As you've seen from my, I don't know if you guys have that if you're up north, but we have them down here in the south. You're probably wondering by this wonderful accent as to exactly where I'm from, but um, I live on the Gulf Coast of Alabama. And uh, we have Hobby Lobby, Michael's, and uh, Tuesday morning, which I just found has some pretty cool things that we can use. And then when you just put them on, you just press it down a little bit with your finger. Um, and one of the really the only things that I think about when I'm collaging is I don't like two text forms um, side by side. So I try to just mix it up. So a little text, a little pattern here, a little napkin. Um, you know, and if you dig in your box and just find out. So this will be a cool one. This has some nice color to it. We'll just tear a little square off of there. And like I say, I'm going to probably speed this up to be able to uh, get everything in that you want to. I'm not real certain about this whole YouTube process and how long the video can be, but... nice red letters there. Right over here to the side. I've got a few other scraps. And if you see where a piece doesn't quite um, stick, then you can always just put a little extra glue on there and no big deal. And you know, for me, I don't really care if there's any white envelope showing behind it. Because again, one of our um, next steps is going to be able to cover this with a um, old sewing pattern. So it's not really going to be where you get to see it. Um, this is another, in any collection that you have, um, this one is, it says... Uh, I think it's Graphic 45. Again, I found this at Tuesday morning. I kind of like it because it has the um, clocks in there. And I think that's cute whenever it shows through um, a little bit. Gives you some variation in color and pattern. Um, and you can, you know, just tear them up. Have fun. This is one of the things that I enjoy that I find to be relaxing is that it can be as sloppy as you want it to be. And I'm not a very specific person when it comes to my art. Um, I do a lot of different things and I enjoy just kind of relaxing and not thinking through the process too much. Ooh, the glue can kind of stick to you so be careful whenever you're putting your stuff down. And now I'm going to just show you. This is kind of the process. And you're going to cover it completely. And now I'm going to be like one of those uh, cooking shows. Wherever they pull out 
the product that's already completely cooked. So I'm going to kind of show you what one of my other completed to this point process is. You're going to cover it from corner to corner, edge to edge, cover it completely. Any random pattern paper, colored paper that you want, just cover it however you want to. Now what we're going to do on the back, and you could definitely collage the entire um, back if you wanted to. For me, typically you're going to focus more on the front of the envelope whenever you receive mail. So what I have done um, on some of my other ones, which I will show you in a moment, is just take an old piece of book paper and cover that completely with the back. And of course, like I say, these are just ideas. You could very well do the entire um, envelope with just one piece of paper. I kind of like the contrast and the texture that it creates um, whenever you have the um, collage part. But, like I say, you can do it any way you want to. I just wanted to kind of show you guys so you can get out there and have fun and have a cool new idea on mail art journal pages. Um, I do, I've gotten into art journaling and paper crafting more so in the last little bit I really think it's therapeutic and enjoyable. Um, and for me, I did not really put any text or decoupage um, or collage work up here on the top. What I did is actually cover it with a a sewing pattern. So the next step in this process is just going to take some scissors, just your regular household scissors, and what I do is trim it, just take it in there, and just trim it down to fit your envelope. It's not rocket science, just a little trim trim here with the paper. You know, I will say be careful not to cut the side of your envelope because you do want this to be uh, usable if you're going to use it for mail art. You want it to be able to hold content. Um, let me clean this up a little bit. Yeah, I'm one of those people when I am creating art, I just get wild and crazy and leave junk everywhere. So, And I saw a little edge over here that caught my finger that has not really stuck down. So. The next part of this process is going to be to grab yourself a piece of sewing pattern. So this actually is not the sewing pattern part itself. I don't know what it is. I don't think it is. I don't sew. Although I did purchase a sewing machine recently, so I may. But this, um, I just really like to get the words on there when we cover it. And um, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but uh, Michael's had these little sponges, brushes on sale for uh, $14 for a dollar, something crazy. So take anything. You could use an old credit card to uh, put your um, glue. You could use Mod Podge, I assume. I, I didn't. I actually um, am using the Liquitex Matte Medium, um, the Fluid Medium. This is just really what it says. It's fluid. It allows you to be able to really get it in all the crevices. But you could use anything that you wanted to uh, to be able to just glue the surface down. So what I do is I don't pre-cut the sewing pattern. Um, so I just take it and look and see. Like that's going to give us some really good, uh, hopefully you guys can see it. But this is going to give you some really good pattern over the front. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're going to start in the front and then flip it over and do the back with all this one sheet. No cutting until we're at the very end. Okay, so now take the matte medium. And I hope you're not hearing my dogs in the living room that are barking and carrying on crazy. We have a new puppy in our life and so he is uh, keeping us all very busy. She, sorry, not he. I have a trusty assistant in the background here, so he's keeping me in frame, we hope. And so just slap it on there, really. Um, then come back with your sewing pattern, and I just kind of get a guide for it. 
and I'm not sure that I brought my credit card um, in here, my little wiper thing that I was using to press it out, but that's okay, it's no big deal. Um, all you want to do really is just make sure you burnish the edges. Get all those air bubbles out. I personally don't care if it wrinkles up or tears a little bit. Like I say, I think it just gives it a little bit of character. It doesn't really bother me. Um, and then the back that we just did, flip it over here. And we could trim this down just a little bit to be a little bit more manageable for us. And I am not precise at all when it comes to this. But we're just going to cut it here. And if you make it too short or something, it's no big deal. Just stick it back on there. In case you haven't realized, I don't fuss over too much of this stuff because, like I say, it's just fun and relaxing. And, you know, I enjoy getting happy mail, fun mail. Um, and I would much rather have something beautiful and nice in the mailbox than I had a bunch of bills. So, hopefully, this will make someone stay. And like I say, I made several of these for the Your Paper Pantry, which I'll link uh, to the bottom if I can figure out how and uh, kind of show you guys. And I was encouraged by a young lady, uh, Miss Shelly Graham Turner, who has a YouTube channel. And uh, I'll link to her as well. She introduced me to the Your Paper Pantry and a um, very wonderful lady who I have learned a lot from. So, as you can see, we've just slapped the sewing pattern on here, glued it. I like to go back and just press it out, kind of smooth it out. Because with it being just a tissue paper, which is all sewing pattern really is, it's going to soak through there and just completely cover uh, this area for you. Okay? And so now we're just going to take and trim this right down to the. Uh, Typically, I would let this sit, but uh, we're going to go ahead and trim it on down. Trim it on down for us to be able to show you the rest of the video while I have my cameraman behind me here who hopefully is uh, getting this all in frame for you guys so you can see. But it's really not anything complicated. And there we go. And then we got just one little area to trim here. Okay. And so now all sides are clear, um, clear, free of the remaining sewing pattern. So now let this sit. Let this dry however long it takes. I'm not sure. I, I did several of these at the same time and then went back. 30 minutes to an hour later. So we're going to set this one to the side. And abracadabra. Show it. No. Okay. Abracadabra. Here we go. This is the one that uh, we have decoupaged. It has dried. You can see how this is wet and darker. And this is much uh, lighter and completely dried. So that's what you're looking for. Is to, it'll be kind of crispy too. Kind of crispy. And, you know. But. Okay, so now we have gotten this completed. This stage is complete. At this point, you could draw on it, doodle on it, whatever your little happy heart would like to do. But for me, in the process that I did, we're going to now grab some um, inks. And I will tell you, I have watched some YouTube videos where people have supplies out of the wazoo. I, on the other hand, do not have tons of paper supplies. My husband may disagree, but I do not have tons. So what I have is I actually only have in my arsenal five distress inks. Um, you could probably use other kinds of inks. I don't know. This is just what I'm using. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to actually use the Victorian Velvet Distress Ink.
um, which is kind of a rosy color. Very pretty. Um, pink's my most favorite color. So, um, Then we're also going to use the peeled paint. Um, that's another one that I'm going to use. It's going to be that one. And then yesterday, actually, um, I picked up the Vintage Photo um, ink pad at Hobby Lobby. They had them on sale for 30% off. So um, we've got that as well. So now, with my handy dandy little Ranger blending tool, I think they call this, which FYI, by the way, the handle broke off, which I'm sure I could stick some glue in. But you know what? For right now, I'm not even going to worry about it. Um, this, you could also use, if you don't have one of those blending tools, um, you could also use a makeup sponge. Um, most of us has, have those in our arsenal anyway. You can pick them up at the Dollar Tree. Um, we're going to use, um, we may actually use part of that in there. So, now, um, which, you know, these things were not made out of the best quality because uh, it kind of unstuck the very first time I used it. So, which was actually the very first time I used this was on this project. So, okay. So, all we're going to do is just get your um, distress thing. And as you know, some people use the craft mat, and that's fantastic. I don't. I use uh, just craft paper that you can pick up at the Dollar Tree. Um, one of the reasons is because I like to reuse these in my... Um, and I may just dab it here so it doesn't get any hard lines on it. And just circle motion around the side. But one of the things that I do with the craft paper or any kind of scrap paper that I'm using is I'll reuse that. Again, repurposing and recycling. But I will reuse that in an art journal page. Um, you know, just get the most bang out of your book. Some of these uh, products can, you know, you can spend quite a bit of money on it. So, um, and all I'm doing here is just circular motions. And if you see that your paint's kind of running, just, um, not your paint, excuse me, your ink is kind of a little bit darker, just dab it on your craft surface, whatever you're using there. And uh, you could actually cover this with newspaper. Uh, where I work at, we actually get quite a bit of packing supplies that I actually go back and uh, use and keep them uh, for these kind of things. But as you can see, it's just really kind of green now. And then I flip it over and uh, just circular motion still. And as you can see, a little piece peeled up. That's not a big deal. I can just take my fingernail and just scrub it off there. Um, that's actually, I think, where I had to go in with a second layer. Um, no big deal. And just go around with your distressing ink. And I try to also see where's the envelope going to close. And kind of come right there in that little line and make it a little bit darker. Okay, I think we've got, and you know, if I do this just by eye, so if I think we need to go back, you know, just go back and add a color. Um, I'm going to use the, uh, and I don't have enough of these little pads for five. I don't have five of those. So what I just do is kind of half and half. So I think this is my vintage photo in this, uh, what was it, Victorian Velvet Distress Ink by Tim Holtz. Um, and when you get it on there, like I said, just kind of dab it off and then go back over it. I like the way it kind of gives it that rosy kind of color. It kind of looks good with the napkins that we used. It kind of brings out some of that pink in the background. I think that's really nice too. But if you don't have it, by all means, use whatever you have in your arsenal. It's not going to be a big deal. And we're just going to continue to go back around just like we did. And you can go further in the middle if you want to. Make it a little rosier. Um, this is totally up to you. I just think it gives it a nice, grungy. And I think the pink kind of adds that Victorian, or what I would like to think was Victorian uh, look to it. And you're just going to, when that green and pink meet up, it kind of turns it a uh, brownish color. So, as you can see there, 
Um, I've, you know, pretty, pretty much covered it. Um, and just circular motions, circular motions all around. Make sure you get the little lip up here. And you know, I was quite nervous about the uh, swap with the vintage grunge. Um, so I asked a friend uh, what she thought about it. Did this look grungy enough? And then I posted it on a Facebook group um, that I'm involved in. Document your life uh, journey is uh, I'll link to it as well. Now I'm just going to add this little vintage photo. And like I say, I'm just going to use the opposite side of the pink. And we're going to add just a little bit of that to it as well. Until you get it to the point where you think it's grungy enough for you. Okay. And now I just remembered that I forgot one of my supplies in the other room. So I'm going to grab it real quick. And I'll have, sorry about that. I had to run and grab uh, one of the other pieces that kind of make it uh, grungy. And my dogs are going crazy again. So I'm sure you probably hear that in the background. And, and you know, you see these little flip ups happening here. That's not a problem. What you can do is just set it up under a heavy book um, and it'll help flatten it out. So, no worries about that. And my dogs are still going crazy. And we'll just kind of take it up to the top a little bit. So. I think that looks really good. Okay, so now as far as distressing, um, one of the other um, things that I have, and if you don't have this, I think this is perfectly fine. This is grungy, vintage looking um, right there, just like it is. Um, but I actually have um, the Favor, uh, Favor Gelato, Favor Castel Gelato um, sticks. Um, I don't. I only have one set, um, so I only have four of these little sticks. But they did come with this little blending tool. Um, but as you can see, it's getting a little worn. So um, if you don't have this, this would be a great opportunity for you to use your makeup sponge um, and kind of blend that out because that's really the purpose um, of it. Is just and what I do is just put it directly on there, and now we'll come in. I hope you're able to catch this and kind of uh, blend it a little bit. And you know, however, little circular, light circular motion, however you want to do it, um, just gives it a little additional depth of grunge effect I suppose we're still recording that okay this okay okay so now the front's done flip it over to the back or we could actually do it like this and you know those uh, gelatos are really nice um, I've also seen videos, I think it was from the Frugal Crafter, that uh, talks about the gel sticks, which are a, a more, more economical uh, way, a lot cheaper than the uh, gelatos. I found that after the fact that I bought those, but I do have it on my Amazon wish list um, to be able to get. Um, some of those gel sticks because I really like them. I really like um, the way you can use them. Um, and there's many videos out there. And it's just like a crayon, you know. And then you just go back. You could probably do this with um, 
those oil pencils pastels and things like that I don't have any of those so I don't know but uh, I think that they would probably work just fine so I think we've got about got the effect that we were going for and now we're moving into our final steps okay what I did is I actually um, dyed some cheesecloth with coffee I guess you could use tea coffee what have you um, I'll show you what it looks like I can't really remember where we got this um, I do drink loose leaf tea and oftentimes use cheesecloth and that was the purpose while it was in my kitchen um, but this is how it looks so very light ivory beige um, I mixed I brewed a cup of strong coffee mixed one teaspoon of instant coffee with it and it was who it would have been a very strong cup of coffee but um I let it sit in there and I really didn't let it sit that long because this was my first time ever dying cheesecloth with coffee and it has a real nice coffee smell so whenever somebody gets it in their mailbox it's going to smell like coffee so and I in my precise measuring <laughs> that's a joke um I am going to let's see and because it's so fine and my scissors is so dull it's probably no telling how many different things that I shouldn't cut with my scissors that I did but we're just going to cut a chunk off of there okay and so the other thing that I did is I found some really great freebie printable places and I'm going to have to look and find out exactly where I got them from but these were some of them um and what I did was I took the exact process that we did with the envelope itself. I cut it out and then I just put the green, the, uh, what was it, the peeled paint and the Victorian velvet distress and a little of the vintage photo around the edges just to kind of distress this because this will be the address where they create the address for. So, um that's what I did I will definitely try to find the link um, I found it on Pinterest actually and you can uh, click on it it was a freebie printable and um, really awesome I thought it went perfect for the theme and so what I kind of did is just kind of laid it here and saw how much do you want in the edge you know and so I'm not looking for a huge amount I think this just really provides a good bit of texture um, and I actually think I'm going to probably do a journal page um, similar to this because I really like the way it comes out and you don't want too much because again if you're going to use this for mail art it's going to go in the post office and we all know how sometimes it doesn't come out the way it went in so just you know however if you if this uh works for you it works for me um how i adhered it is the um Aline's tacky glue the original formula um this tended to bond a little better with the cheesecloth than the uh matte medium gels and i tried this little pearl thing to help keep it open but I still, because that glue is so thick, I still really struggle to open it. So, what I did is I just took it. I'm so not uh, tech savvy with uh, techniques here. So, I just stuck it with my finger. It's all going to get the same thing eventually, I suppose. And just place it directly onto the envelope wherever you want it. You never thought you'd learn a technique like this on YouTube, I'm sure. So just plaster it on here good. Rub it in. Then take your cheesecloth. And you know, once you do the cheesecloth in the coffee, you'll have to let it dry. It didn't really take that long. And the Eileen's 
I guess that's how you say it. The Allen's um, original tacky glue dries clear. So it doesn't really matter if it's on the edges or not. And then if you had a credit card um, or some kind of brayer type mechanism. And actually over here I use this for some of my clay work. Yes, I do all kinds of things. Um, but, you know it'll serve the purpose here today so guys that pretty much wraps it up this is the ending result and these are a few of the ones that I did uh, before this printout like I said was from the free um, printout place wherever that is and I'll link it to it at the bottom if I can figure out how to do it I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial um, I may if this turns out okay i may actually make a few more um i really enjoy learning uh different techniques and different things on youtube and i hope you do too so until next time see you later